this week's challenge is going to be a little different. Short period of time ago, an individual did chopping test with four knives, one of which is the Grasso Bolo by Bark River, and it was the only one of the four knives that suffered any ill effects during the chopping, and it actually suffered catastrophic failure as the edge boat rippled and then a huge piece of the primary grind actually blew out about the size of your thumb. Now a number of people after seeing that failure thought that there may be something wrong with the steel in the knife because it was kind of unreasonable for the behavior seen given the nature of that particular steel and the type of knife that it was and the promotion of that knife by Bark River. And there were some discussions in a few of the forms and I'm going to provide links to all this down in the description. In response to that, Mike Stewart of Bark River posted a rather lengthy response where he argued that, interestingly enough, this was the actual expected behavior of the knife. That it was intended, designed, and again expected to behave in that manner. Which is kind of an interesting position to take. And he argued that it mainly was because the wood was unsupported, meaning it wasn't rigorously fixed in position and it was free to move and of course the individual was trying to cut through a knot. And he even went so far to say that it had nothing to do with the steel, nothing to do with the cross section and in fact he had seen that issue from all different types of knives from different makers and manufacturers and it has concluded it's due to the effect that he calls the unsupported edge phenomenon, which sounds quite impressive. So the knife pitcher, which Dr. Feynman is carefully inspecting the adjacent areas of, is a similar ground knife. That one's actually ground significantly thinner. It has a full height convex grind, and not partial like on the Grasso Bolo. It has no secondary edge bevel. It did come with one, but I blended it back into the main primary grind after uh, some use. So the challenge this week is to defeat the argument that Mike Stewart gave in defense of the performance of the blade. To make it a bit more interesting, I am actually going to be defending the argument of Mike Stewart as if I was an employee of Bark River. So I'll be speaking from that perspective. The winner of the challenge, which I will run for an extended period of time, um, due to allow for the interaction between me and whoever decides to participate, is the person, by the end of the challenge, which would be Sunday, who can make an argument that I can't actually defeat or, barring that, just gives the strongest argument out of all the participants. There is only essentially one rule and that is if at any time you lose control and you resort to an ad hominem attack you automatically lose. However, I will at times intentionally try to provoke that and I will also at times intentionally try to move the conversation away from the performance of the knife and onto other areas. So you have to consistently move the conversation back to where it is supposed to be, criticism of the argument, and avoid debating that will attempt to engage you into a personal and hopefully ad hominem attack from your side. It should be an interesting exchange and a thought-provoking one. 
<laughs> so let's see how it goes. <laughs> 